Hello and welcome to Student Exposure, where we highlight student-produced projects created by participants in DCTV's training program. I am your host, Mallory Isaacs, and thank you so much for joining us. Today's show is Student Exposure's Dance Fever, and it's about some of the amazing and varied types of dance that are alive and well in Washington, D.C. today. Most people dance, there are those who study it as an art. Today, we'll check out a dance that is unique to D.C., a dance that is sometimes described as a way of life, a place where students of all types can learn to dance, and a dance that has rich history. Stay tuned to find out some of the new things about dancing and how they fit into the district's rich heritage and culture. This is Student Exposure Dance Fever. DC has its very own dance? Well, now you do. And we have an exclusive interview with some of its leaders. Coming up, we will take a look at the growing movement to stop the violence and dance. DC's own Beat Your Feet dance movement is all about moving your feet to DC's Go Go Beat while providing an outlet for young people who might otherwise find trouble. My name is Portia, aka Queen P from the Beach of Feet Kings. Um, a little bit about what I do, I am a creative director, a choreographer, dancer, host, and judge. I've been dancing um, for about 20 years, uh, 15 years professionally. My name is John Crazy Legs Pearson. Beat Your Feet came from um, a series of different names and basically it was a name that stuck out of many. Um, the dance itself was used to be called the Slush and the different go-go bands throughout from the city, uh, TCB, Backyard, Raw Image, uh, UCB, they created different songs and we did dances to the different names of the songs and one of the songs names were Beat Your Feet, which TCB band started. So they used to have this dance called the Beat Your Feet Dance. And out of all the names, the Beat Your Feet name stuck. And everyone just started calling it Dance, Beat Your Feet. I was introduced to Beat Your Feet uh, in 2003. Uh, the dance went viral throughout the city, DC, Maryland, Virginia. and. Uh, I heard about the top dancers in the city and I, I searched for them, found them, and I kind of trained up under them and I, I studied to be the best dancer and here I am years later uh, leading the movement. Beat Your Feet is important to DC culture, uh, specifically uh, because of the music. Um, the go-go music itself is part of DC's culture. There are different cultures and each culture has different things that make it unique. The Beat Your Feet dance belongs to the go-go culture and that's what makes it so unique. There are various amount of different styles of Beat Your Feet. To me, um, there's the style that's crankage, which is a little faster paced in the go-go music and then there's bounce beat. <laughs> Swag. Um, you have to have swag to really show how you really captivate the dance. Uh, swag and personality, those are the, the main points. Being a part of MTV's America's Best Dance Crew um, in the Beach of Feet Kings, it was a very humbling experience. It was something that I could look back on and uh, know that I represented the city well. A message I would want to leave to the world about Beat Your Feet is simple, just join the movement. Yeah. 
Beat Your Feet is creative, Beat Your Feet is innovative, Beat Your Feet is different, and Beat Your Feet is so DC. That was a really fun piece. I'm feeling like beating my feet myself. And here in the studio today, we have DC TV student producer Marquita Masali. Welcome so much. Hi, for... thank you for having me. It's awesome to have you here. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited about being in Washington, DC for seven, eight plus years. I'm familiar with this dance, but tell our audience where people can go to learn how to beat their feet. Well, you can definitely catch them on your local uh, various corners right. just beating their feet. It is um, it's a local dance. Yeah. And so what's the average age group or the type of person who participates in this dance? I would definitely say it's a mixture because you have your millennials and you definitely have some of your old school talent mm -hmm. that were around when the dance was first born. Right. So pretty much anyone can do it, it seems. Of course. Cool. And I know beating your feet, it's typically done to go-go music, but what other forms of music might it be done to? I would definitely say any type of music that has an upbeat rhythm mm -hmm. or um, hip-hop, uh, maybe a little R&B and a little band music, live okay. band music. Okay, and so participating in this project, did you learn a little bit about the dance or how to do it at least? <laughs> I would like to think that I learned the dance, <laughs> but I'm You've pretty committed sure. it to memory. Yeah, right, right, okay. in my head. In my head, I do it quite well, but <laughs> I don't know how I do it physically. Right. So. <laughs> well, we have, we have your project to show us and our viewers, so thank you so much for stopping by. This thank was a lot you. of fun. <laughs> What started in the neighborhood of Berry Farms years ago and was once marred by violence has risen to take on a different purpose. From the streets of D.C. to MTV, the leaders of the Beat Your Feet movement are committed to taking it worldwide. For information on Beat Your Feet, visit www.beatyourfeet.com. Three, two, one. D.C. TV is not your ordinary television station. We are a membership community of people just like you. Grandmas, teachers, tastemakers, artists, leaders, students, activists, and enthusiasts who are learning, creating, and sharing media through a platform built to empower you to express yourself. You can take one of our media training courses where you can learn things like producing, videography, how to edit video, or operate a television studio. We put the power of media in your hands with unprecedented access to state-of-the-art media facilities and equipment. You can get your hands on HD cameras, produce a show in one of our fully equipped studios, or edit your projects in a private suite. Unleash your voice and be heard by airing your self-produced program on one of our seven, yes, seven cable channels. DC TV is more than just television. We will be your cheerleader your advocate, your mentor, and your motivator. We are your voice. We are your network. Join us at dctv.org. Did you know that hand dancing is a way of life in Washington, D.C.? Let's explore hand dancing as art, its old and new school styles, and its soulful expressions. It is the main dance of Washington, D.C., and so many people have learned it over the years. I mean, when I was a little boy, I used to watch my parents and my older cousins do this dance, and it's just populated and it has continued over the years. Okay, the question is what direction? What foot do you start off with? I grew up in Washington, D.C., hand dancing, and so I've been dancing, hand dancing, since I was a teenager, probably earlier than that, because we just watched other people do it and we did it we weren't taught how to do it it was just from one person down to the oldest sister to the youngest and that's what we did we in hand dance have two separate styles uh, we have what we call the old school and we have what we call new school whereas I uh, enjoy watching old school. I'm not an old school dancer. I'm a new school dancer. So my style is a, a, a different, a slot pattern movement of, of smoothness. 
I really don't think any of the steps are difficult to learn because they're really only two basic steps. That's your kick step and your travel step. What I think becomes difficult when you're trying to learn how to incorporate those steps into different moves. We have so many more moves now that we teach than we did when I was growing up doing hand dancing. Watching a new student get this dance is like a mother watching her newborn toddler learning to walk. You're just so impressed, especially if they seem to be getting it easily. You know, it really brings a warm tug to your heart to see that. I think hand dancing brings out well-being in everyone who does it because it's a form of exercise. And if you're like I am, I don't like jogging, I don't like running, I don't want to go to the gym. But I teach hand dance five nights a week. Other two nights, I'm somewhere hand dancing myself. We've had people to come in who have had heart attacks, strokes. The doctors have recommended that they get some form of exercise and they have chosen hand dancing. So it helps you to lose weight, maintain weight. It's fun, not work, not a job. It's a lot of fun. I see the future hand dancing just continuously populating, generating more. You see more and more uh, individuals opening up classes in the whole area, uh, which opens up to more society. If we had more clubs to do this in, it would be just great. But we have a limited amount of clubs, but the clubs are so overly populated when they have a dance night. So I think the future of hand dancing will continue to grow in the Washington, D.C. area. That's a really fun piece. Joining us today is student producer Mary Bolin. Welcome. Hi. So that was a fun, that was a fun little segment that, about hand dancing. Can you tell us a little bit about the history? How did it get started? Well, hand dancing supposedly started with the Seminole Indians in Florida. Oh, okay. Was influenced by the slaves there as well. Um, plantation owners um, had a dance they called the kickwalk, and slaves would walk down these in between two groups of folk, and then at the end, the winner would get a cake. It evolved into the Lindy Hop in the, four, in the 20s, mm -hmm. um, swing sort of Lindy Hop, throwing over your shoulder and such. And then it uh, moved on from there to Jitterbug. And then uh, in the 80s, hand dancing became very popular in Washington. In 1993, the Smithsonian recognized it as an American art form. Wow. And in 1999, the D.C. City Council made it the dance of the city. That's so fantastic. hand dancing is D.C.'s dance. It's <laughs> D.C.'s dance. So um, how was it a way of life, though, that was referenced in the piece? Tell, tell us a little bit more about that. Well, people, I think, who go hand dancing, they have a chance to socialize, relax off their job, mm -hmm. um, you know, connect with other people. It's healthy. It's fun. It, for a lot of folks, it is a way of life. And it's a great pastime. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Sure. It was a really fun piece to watch. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Yep. Hand dancing is sensual and stimulating and comes out of a rich history of cultures and celebrations. We appreciate learning more about hand dancing and seeing its evolution as a dance for old schoolers and newcomers alike. For more information about hand dancing in Washington, D.C., visit smoothersandsmooth.com. Check out this chef, right? <laughs> so gay. Please don't say that. It's like if I thought this pepper shaker was stupid, and I said, man, this pepper shaker is so 16-year-old boy with a cheesy mustache. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Did you know there is an organization that provides positive direction in dance for youth? It's called the Dance Institute of Washington, and it also provides instruction, tutoring, and workforce development for kids and adults. Located in the heart of Columbia Heights, Dance Institute of Washington is a space for students of all ages to explore, create, and experience the art of dance in innovative and engaging ways. Let's take a closer look at the talent, dedication, and passion of the students and staff at this unique, enriching organization. Remember the notes, please. When I was growing up, I was able to take dance lessons, and then from there, I was able to travel to New York City and under the directorship of Arthur Mitchell, the founder of the Dance Theater of Harlem, 
um, I knew what dance did for my life and I wanted to give the community the same opportunities that I had been given as a child. We have about 45, 50 students that participate in our weekly pre-professional program. That's Monday through Friday. Um, and our classes start from 5.30 to 8.30. Um, and they do a series of classes. Now, of course, the Dance Institute of Washington is a ballet school. So first and foremost, they have ballet every day. But they also get to take elective classes, modern, hip hop, African, jazz, tap on Saturdays, act, grow, and tumbling on Saturdays as well. We have a lot of extremely gifted um, students. There, there's so much talent in the studio. The Dance Institute of Washington offers several several different dance recitals and programs. We have our annual Kwanzaa extravaganza, which has been going on for about 15 years. We did our Nutcracker, which we haven't done since 1993. That includes our pre-dance students, our ballet series students, our community students on Saturdays, our pre-professional and junior youth ensemble students, and it also includes our Pilot Directions to Dance students. They're our outreach students, and they're here during the week for as much time as our pre-professional students are as well. What makes the Dance Institute of Washington unique is the fact that it focuses so much of its attention on being a family and being a community. There's no student or parent that comes in that's made to feel like they're on the outside. I think everyone here feels extremely included in everything that's going on. We look at everyone in this building like they're a family, like they're a part of something. And I don't think you find that a lot of places. I think a lot of schools focus so much on the performances or how far a student's leg can go or a student's turnout and I think here it's rare to find a group of instructors or a group of staff members that care not just about the technique but care about the individual. Over 60 percent of our students are here on scholarship so actually that um, gives a lot of young people opportunities that they wouldn't have otherwise. Um, and again, with the outreach program, they actually are paid through the Department of Employment Services and it gives them the opportunity to dance. They do tutoring, life skills, dancing, and we actually do a lot of field trips. The facility of the Dance Institute of Washington is gorgeous. I haven't seen a studio like this since living in New York. Um, I mean, this space is phenomenal. It doesn't compare to any other studio or dance space you see in the DC metropolitan area. It's just phenomenal. Um, there's a lot of natural light, a lot of windows, a lot of studios. Our largest studio splits into two. It holds about 90 students at a time. I mean, the studios are just easy to fall in love with. A young man who last year ran track. Now for some reason he decided he wanted to try to dance this summer summer 2014. Um, he did for the summer and then decided he didn't want to do track anymore. He wanted to dance. And so he came to me last week and told me he just got a scholarship to the Dance Theater of Harlem for the summer intensive program there. So that's what makes me happy to see them actually be able to develop as young artists and as young, um, articulate young men and, and women. We want to encourage as many people as possible to just come out and join a program, take a drop-in class, take a Saturday class, um, just inquire. You know, we want to give back to as many students and adults as possible because the students don't just stop at teens and kids. We take adults. We want to just continue growing growing as an organization and helping grow the arts culture in D.C. Dancing was something that was so important and so transformative for me um, as a young person. And I saw how you could dream something and then have it come true. Um, because when I started dancing, I said, I want to go and I want to be a professional dancer. And 
it happened. And then I said, oh, I want a school and I want to have opportunities for young people, and it happened. So, I mean, the thing is that if you work hard, if you're willing to work hard, anything is possible. Great perspective on an important topic. Joining us to discuss this segment is student producer Eric Lang. Welcome. Thank you. How are you doing today? Great. So after observing the students in practice, what surprised you the most about the rehearsal process? The rehearsal pro process was so physically and mentally demanding. The students had to repeat and do some really intense physical work and they just had to repeat and repeat and repeat and they just it was just a, hard to, to imagine how much energy it takes, mental and physical, to do that. But it was amazing to watch them be so dedicated and involved. So, like, how many hours of practice do you think kind of went into that? I think some of the students practiced three or four hours a day. Wow. The professional students, yes. Wow, that's awesome. So what did you learn about the Institute's Senior Youth Repertory Ensemble? The Senior Ensemble, they perform at venues across the country, mm -hmm. at the Kennedy Center, um, and some of them go on to great universities and professional dance troops like the Dance Theater of Harlem and wow. the Alvin Ailey Dance Troupe. So it's really impressive. And some of them are go on scholarship, is that? Yeah, a lot of the, the students case? there are on scholarship and uh, they continue on on other scholarships to other institutions. That's awesome. I mean, I didn't know about that and I'm sure our viewers didn't either. So thank you so much for stopping by thank and you. sharing the story. Thanks. From the intrinsic beauty of the architecture to the liveliness and ingenuity of the people, the Dance Institute of Washington is not only a place for arts development, but a jewel in the heart of D.C., offering inspiration to all who enter its doors. For more information about the Dance Institute of Washington, please visit their website at danceinstitutewa.org. Its name is Killer. Thought of to be a thriller, worldwide record, putting a scratch on people's records, leaving them without a song to sing. Killer passing, killer going, killer person like no other killer. Spreads like a rumor from one person to another. Don't stay protected and you'll end up like the other. A killer with no words, a killer with no sounds, a killer that will do whatever to take you out of bounds. But hold up, back it up. Let's take it back the way you should have wrapped it up. Now I said what I had to say, I did what I had to do. Now all that's left for me to do is wrap it up, I'm through. What comes to mind when you hear fighting words like kick, punch, and block? If you're like most of us, you envision some sort of fighting or hand-to-hand -hand combat. Enter Capoeira. The hybrid dance combines elements of martial arts, South American and African rhythms, and spirituality to create a truly unique form. Styles of capoeira, capoeira and gola, and capoeira e regional. The style that he does here is capoeira and gola. And the capoeira originated in West Africa. It was a rite of passage where young men can marry without going through the traditions of marriage. But capoeira had changed when the slaves went to Brazil or to the New World, and it took on a different, different, uh, uh, I would say, look for it to survive. And it mixed capoeira with a dance fight martial art. We ask, you know, uh, 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 Afro-Brazilian or African-American people, we all came from the same source. They got dropped off over there, we got dropped off over here. So we had the same culture, the same mind, everything. You know what I mean? So when they develop capoeira over there, you know, we develop, you know, great dance and all our culture here. So really it's the same. You know what I mean? Just something that came back to us when we put our mind and be creative. You know? All this stuff will come back, but the roots of it is, you know, this is from Africa. This um, we practice the music in order uh, to drive the players within the uh, capital of the world. Uh, we 
play capoeira in a circle, usually, and we have um, the instruments, people who play the instruments, and then we have people who play uh, the game of capoeira. We call it a game um, when two people are doing capoeira together. Uh, how we feel or playing the instruments, the instruments, uh, it's more, it's, it's more to, uh, to it than just playing instruments. The instruments give you energy. Uh, the instruments make you feel good. Uh, the energy can go very high. The energy can go very low. It just brings an, an uh, excitement to your spirit when you when, when you play the instruments. Um, we also sing songs. When they sing, they sing from the inside. You can feel the spirituality in this. You can feel the suffering of, of the afro brazilian people, you know. And then if you look at them, you can see, you know, people's eyes closed and, you know, and you can, uh, uh, chills and stuff come to your body. And even when I play capoeira, when you kneel down at the Benny Bob, you know, you just get, you know, chills and stuff all on your body, you know what I'm saying? Because you can feel, and it makes you want to cry. spiritual aspect to Capoeira, um, just the sound of it, the sound of the bedroom ball, the sound of the uh, go-go, um, if you would just, um, as you're playing, um, at the same time, you just allow your body to relax, you're relaxing, uh, your, your body starts to move to the rhythm of the music, and uh, plenty of times I've if I've gone into like a state of just uh, just relaxation, you know. I'm playing the instrument, but at the same time, my mind is relaxed, my body is relaxed, you know, it's meditative. Capoeira and God, capoeira uh, is spiritual, you know what I mean? For instance, even when we sing the songs, you know, we sing a song uh, about God, you know what I'm saying? My only deals became so ill, through the kill day. And that song you saying, God is great, you know what I'm saying? But inside the Capoeira and Gola, I find my own greatness. And then we go on to something called uh, Shula. And Shula is like when we get prayed. Yeah, we got meal deals. Yeah, you can't be seen no. Yeah, we got meal mastery, you know? And then they will go on to something called Cohedo. And they will sing a song about, Balani deals, he also been getting joke, got meal by me. What he say, you know, he's talking about God. God gave him the, uh, the power to play Capoeira in God. So the spiritual part is deep inside the Capoeira in God. And you can't take that out. Because if you take that out, it just becomes all fight. When you say Capoeira, uh, you don't choose Capoeira. Capoeira chooses you, you know what I mean? So Capoeira has chosen me because what I'm doing I couldn't do it without his chosen me, you know. Oh, this is my gift to the world. What an exciting story. Joining us to discuss this segment is student producer Demetrius Cheeks. Welcome. Thank you for having me. How you doing? I'm doing all right. You had a really interesting story that you worked on with your group. So um, Capoeira seems a little bit part dance, part, part martial arts. What is it? Tell us the distinction. Well, the distinction is slight, but there is a distinction. Um, there are two aspects, basically, the martial arts aspect and the okay. dance aspect. Uh -huh. uh, the martial arts aspect focuses on self-defense, whereas the dance aspect focuses on things like spirituality, uh, the rhythm, the drums, and uh, the, just the positive vibes. And that's what we chose to do our piece on. That's a lot. That's a lot goes into it. So while you were observing the participants and the dancers, if you will, did you notice any coordination between the two of them? Like they kind of tried to stay out of each other's way, or did they anticipate each other's dance moves? What did you see? Well, I couldn't tell if there was any, you know, uh, anticipation of each other's moves. Mm -hmm. However, um, I asked one of the students, and I was actually told that, you know, there's no coordination. So uh, if you get kicked, you get kicked. <laughs> but uh, the way you defend against that, though, is getting to know your partner. Okay. And you both are in, in tune to the music, in mm -hmm. tune to the rhythm, uh, in tune to each other. And there's sort of a symbiotic relationship that keeps you from getting essentially kicked in the face. Okay, so I think you might know what I'm going to ask you next. As a student yourself, if you will, from working on this project, show us a basic dance move or martial art move. I would love to, Mallory, but 
I'm a lover, not a fighter. So the, uh, the I, martial arts I, I aspect. I saw you do something about this. What does it look like? Do I have it right? Is this kind of what it looks like? That's correct. It's almost like a matrix move, but you sort of have the oh, slow see, motion. Oh, see, no. See, don't leave me hanging out there. I try. Well, thank you for joining us in the studio today. What was once the forbidden dance of African and South American slaves has transcended time, transforming itself into an artful skill practiced in D.C. and around the world. For more information about the Universal Capoeira Angola Center, visit their website at universalcapoeira.org. Three, two. D.C. TV is not your ordinary television station. We are a membership community of people just like you. Grandmas teachers, tastemakers, artists, leaders, students, activists, and enthusiasts who are learning, creating, and sharing media through a platform built to empower you to express yourself. You can take one of our media training courses where you can learn things like producing, videography, how to edit video, or operate a television studio. We put the power of media in your hands with unprecedented access to state-of-the-art media facilities and equipment. You can get your hands on HD cameras, produce a show in one of our fully equipped studios, or edit your projects in a private suite. Unleash your voice and be heard by airing your self-produced programs on one of our seven, yes, seven cable channels. DCTV is more than just television. We will be your cheerleader, your advocate, your mentor, and your motivator. We are your voice. We are your network. Join us at dctv.org. Well, this concludes another episode of Student Exposure, a student production of DCTV. I am your host, Mallory Isaacs, and we're so glad you joined us for our Dance Fever episode. We hope these stories were informative, inspiring, and helpful to you. For more information on programming or training opportunities at DCTV, visit our website at dctv.org. Also, follow us on Twitter and Facebook to stay connected with DCTV events and projects. See you next time.